All right, well, we're out here pulling planer boards and we are on the Chesapeake and everything we do out here is about covering water. There's not much structure you can see. I mean, nothing we can see at all. There's no rock piles. There's no anything really. It's a big flat bottom. We're just following some contours really. But the name of the game is cover water. Get our spread as big as we can, move as quickly as we can while still presenting the bait the right way. So what you're gonna do is when you first come out here, I know you're gonna be hot to trot and wanna put some lines out. As soon as you get out here, what you're gonna do, put the boat in neutral, turn the motor off, and just look at your icon. I know you're gonna wanna fish, but you gotta chill. Just sit here for two, three, four minutes and look which way the boat is drifting. Doesn't matter which way the waves are going, doesn't matter what the tide chart said, so you think you're gonna go, just wait and see what really happens. We came out here and we just sat and I can see which way we were drifting. Earlier, the tide was going out, we were drifting north to south. Now the tide is coming in with the wind, which is excellent. So we knew we were heading this way, we knew our drift was coming north from south. Heading this way, we're going up the bay. And lucky for us, the wind is going the same way. So what that lets us do is go very fast, but it, because the current is headed this way, our presentation still looks good. So you don't want to get out there and go with the wind when you're going against the current. Uh, you may think you're going quick, but you're not moving probably. You're probably sitting still. You really got to watch your speed on your GPS. Find out where the current is. Try to stay with the current all day long. Now, if you have wind against current and you're locked up, cross the current. Go sideways, but don't just sit there locked up and don't try to go against the current. Just go sideways to it, cross it each way, cross it one way. We were crossing it east, east, west, and it was doing nothing for us. We reversed it and we caught two fish right away. Had a couple other pickups too. But we wouldn't know that unless we tried it. So now the tide has turned. The wind is going with the current, which means we can go very fast. And the name of the game with this system is cover water. Right, Caleb? Cover plenty of it. Cover it all. Right. There may not be any fish here, but we are going to cover water trying. Sure. All right, so you see we're doing 1.1 mile an hour, 1.2, 1.1, 1.3. And the motor guy is only set on three. So we have the current and the wind with us and now I can speed it up a little bit and I'm just gonna probably see the boards better on this side you can see at 1.3 there's not much current getting ripped across those boards they look almost like they're sitting still so that's what you judge you know if you're going too quick you see that current ripping across the board and you know your reel's getting ripped up you want that eel to be able to swim to the bottom hammer to the bottom keep trying to get to the bottom and jiggle those beads make noise do its thing. 1.2, 1.1. Probably get up to 1.3, 1.4. But I got the trolling motor on four, maybe five, and we're going pretty good. All right, Caleb of Catch the Fever. Dot com. Hey guys. Gonna put out a, a line here with a planer. We're gonna show you how we do it. So what we have here. Is about probably a small eel. That's some regular old American eel. We get at the bait shop, and we have about four foot fluorocarbon. Uh, this is 30 pound today, but we go anywhere between 20 and 60, depending on what's going on. We've got three glass beads. We got a quarter ounce, uh, maybe a three eighths split shot on this one. And he's gonna. This one's one's closer to the boat, so we put three on each side. The one closer to the boat will let more line out, so the line is a. Uh, a little further back from the board and a little deeper since it's so close to the boat. So he's going to let out the clicker on. He's going to let out. I don't know. What, 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 what have we been doing? I've been pulling out about 20, about 20, 24 times. All right. Let's do it. And the board that's furthest from the boat, I'll put it closer to the board. And the middle one, you know, gradually getting longer and longer lines as we get closer to the boat. That planer board further out there will actually attract fish. I've seen bass come up and smack the board out of anger, so it's pretty good to put it close. There we go. So that should be right there close to 26, 26 feet. All right, and these are the uh, 
Zach boards, Zach Royce boards, great planer boards. There's a lot of good planer boards out there. We've used several names, but I really like these. And the other lobe was new to me. I never used one with a lobe cut out in the front. And what I have found, especially in fresh water, they jump right over leaves, pine needles. Instead of getting hung up on your board, right. you give me yank, it goes right, right over. Instead of just dragging along. Yeah. Right. And uh, I do a twist and release. I didn't show you this. This a little. Yeah, show me that. I take it and do just a. Just clip the. I just do it like a, I'll grab it and I'll just give it a twist. And then when I, I put the loop in here. And what happens is sometimes if you clip it to the line, when you, if it sits out there for a long time, this line creates a channel in that rubber. Mm. And when you yank, the, this release just slides down the channel. So sometimes it won't release, it just slides. In this situation, the fish hits and like this way and it pulls out the twist and when the twist comes out, there's no way it forces it. Right. It just, the twist comes out and line comes out. So I like that. Yeah. I like that. And I do it with my boards. I do it with my floats. Anything, even the uh, instant downriggers. The important part is you got to clip the clip the lobe of the right. Uh, Don't ever put the clip on the twist what? because if you put the clip on the twist, like spin that real quick, just twist it. If you put like see the twist is right here uh -huh. now pinch that right there like you're the release sometimes when the line comes this will go around the release because it's sticking out like that and it seems like it catches the release every darn darn time and then it's wrapped around and release and you can't trip it right right so don't ever grab the actual twist always grab the loop i only put like two twists and then i grab the loop gotcha gotcha and I've never had a board get hung up and stuck on a fish where you know can you get that board for me kind of deal happens. yeah yeah just grab it. Just give it. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Twist that's it. it. Perfect. Right. Just grab the loop. All right. There you that's go. It. Perfect. Perfect. I like that. Also, another little tip: raise your motor as high as you can if you have fly-by-wire controls. If you have mechanical controls, bump your motor in gear. You go. You know, it's off, of course. So just come up to your control and just whack it. And what that does, it just stops your prop from spinning. Right now my prop is sitting there spinning and it's spinning quick. When he's letting this line out here, say we're drifting a little to the left or to the right, that eel goes under there, it gets anywhere near that spinning prop and it gets sucked right in, it wraps right up. So I, unfortunately I can't stop my prop because I have fly-by-wire, so I just raise my motor as high as I can. Guys with mechanical, controls just pop it in gear reverse or forward doesn't matter and that's it so we got a clicker on and we'll let one out this one's close to the boat so we'll probably stop it right there yeah and you see you just put it locked it up in gear and you'll see that board swinging back hope you can see it ready that's it just swing right out now we're only using we're fighting these fish only about four or five pounds of drag because we have what nothing out here yeah it? Yep. No structure. We can take our time. Yeah, take our time. Make sure the, stay, the fish gets hooked and stays hooked. And then, like, say we're going to fight it here and it's four pounds of drag. I'll back it off just a little. And it helps you just to get the, you know, get to the fish, get working on the fish, and get the rod out of the rod hole. Now, it's a circle hook, so if this fish is screaming off drag, we're just going to pop the rod out of the rod holder go to work and fight that fish but if he's not screaming drag and he's just kind of taking the line down we're gonna come over I'm gonna put this in please pool here just right. so you can see and we're gonna grab it with our elbow out and just as fast as we can but without taking it out that's what's nice about these striper rods see the way the gimbal grabs it you can grab it and just crank as fast as you can until that rod bends down into the meat into the backbone and that fish has got his eyes thoroughly crossed then we take it out of the rod. Give him a toothache, bring him on board. <laughs> That's it. See what he looks like, take him for a boat ride, take a picture, let him go. All right, let's see if we see our spread here. This is the most forward rod. It's that side planer right there. And this rod here is the very next side planer. The rod back here. It's standing straight up, right in the sun, is the furthest planer. It's out there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then we have these two rods that are standing straight up in the deck. Those rod tips are probably about six feet apart. 
but way out there you can see the TOS planer floats. Let's see if I can point one out for you. There's one there and the one there. And you can see, if you can see them, they are probably I don't know, 30, 30 feet apart or so. Even though the rod tips are only six feet apart here. Those planer floats do a really good job of staying away from each other. All right, then we're over here on the port side and it's the same thing. It's cookie cutter on the other side. Just exact opposite. So the furthest one out is the rod furthest to the back, our second, and then our closest. Fish on, fish on, come get it, come get it, come get it, come get it. He don't know he's hooked yet. <laughs> There's really no reason, right? To... Alright, we are out here using the brand new Striper Stealth prototypes. Alright. That's it, man. And this feels good too. And I think you got the. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed this up a touch, and I'll, we'll keep that fish right here. I have these two eels dragging in the water right here, just so you know. So we don't want to get too much farther back there, but. <laughs> yeah, look at that. You see, these rods are perfect because number one, the soft tip is why we hooked up. Period. Right. And now, even though you had that soft tip, you're not. We're not giving up anything. You can see, right about that guide there. That backbone really comes into play. The trick is to wear the fish out. You don't need to horse them, but you need to fight that fish with the backbone. See, the, you have the rod bent right to the backbone. If you don't have it bent to the backbone, right. you're you're not wearing that fish out. Right. So it only needs a couple pounds of drag to get to that backbone. Just make sure you're there. This is the medium action on this one. Yeah, the, I like these mediums, man. Oh, yeah, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> that feels good. Yeah, this, uh, everything has to be soft when you're fishing with bait for striped bass. I imagine catfish as well. It has to be soft because you don't want that fish to feel you and drop the bait, you know? Number one, you got to hook the fish, right? Number That's one, right. you, you can't right. catch them if you don't hook them. So the soft tip is number one. After that is the backbone. Especially with those circle hooks. Also, see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm keeping this fish right here in this corner. And uh, one thing also I've noticed, uh, especially with when the panic sets in, you know, Everyone's just clearing rods, and then before you know it, the fish is circling the boat. No bueno, no good. That's you don't want, right, we don't yeah. want that fish circling the boat. We're keeping the fish right at this corner with this. I'm just speeding it up and slowing it down, going left, going right, whatever it takes to keep the fish right here on this back corner. If it starts to make hay and moves towards the bow, I just speed this up a touch, you know? Perfect. Trolling motor is such a, such a great tool, you know? Use it for everything. That's exactly right. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> it's a pretty fish, brother. Beautiful. Woo! All right. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop her up. All right. In the net. Oh yeah. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. We just brought this fish in real quick. This fish is in good health. This blood is just from the top of the mouth here. It was not gut hooked. And uh, we're gonna be careful. We are gonna use a boga grip, but we're gonna help her with the belly too. And I like to use the grip to help revive these fish. So let's we'll see Caleb go ahead and grab her. And then he's gonna support her by her belly as well. All right, and then wow, that's a fat fish. And he's gonna right over the side and he's gonna hold the grip tight. 
And all we're going to do is you can just grab the lanyard on there. And the boat is moving forward, I don't know, like three or four tenths of a mile an hour. We're not going super fast. And that's all we're going to do. There's a swivel in there, so you can swivel if you want. We're looking at that dorsal fin. And it just takes 10 minutes. It takes 10 minutes. We're not just going to let her go. We're going to have the current sweep her off somewhere. We want to make sure this fish is good and strong before she goes back down. So it takes as long as it takes, you know? That's right. I don't know what this fish weighs, but she is thick. She looks very healthy. Yeah, very pretty fish. And we're just going to... We're not going to work the fish back and forth. We're not going to try, we don't want them to go backwards. We're just using the trolling motor, two, three tenths of a mile an hour. Don't go too fast because you can fill her belly with water. We don't want that. I wonder when her dorsal fin goes up, she starts kicking, we're going to send her loose. And we're going to take as much time as she needs. Yeah, that dorsal's popped up. Anytime you're ready, I think, right. I think we're good. Oh, yeah. Sweet girl. That's so awesome. Nice man. work, brother. Thanks so much, Mike. Oh.